This is the story of a small localised civil war skirmish in a remote community of poor families on the often unforgiving North Sea. Masked by the sea in the historic North Riding of Yorkshire was a rural coastal parish, a manor that was the home and main estate of Royalist Colonel Sir William Penniman. Sir William lived in the magnificent Mask Hall built in the 1620s by his family. It is now a protected listed building and a care home. In August 1642, Sir William and his cousin, Sir James Penniman of nearby Ormsby Hall, marched off with their regiment of foot and troop of horse to the raising of the King's Standard at Nottingham and the start of the First Civil War that was to last until 1646. The regiment fought with the King's main Oxford army until the defeat of the Royalists at Naseby in 1645. For a short time, from April until his early death from Typhus in August 1643, Sir William held the position of Governor of the Royalist capital, Oxford. His monument stands alongside the memorials of other prominent Royalist commanders of the Civil War in the Lucy Chapel, Christ Church Cathedral in Oxford. Whilst the Pennyman cousins were away, Sir William's ageing uncle, James of Ormsby Hall, remained in North Yorkshire. Despite his years, he was active, mustering Royalist soldiers at nearby Gisborough and Stokesley in January 1643. In August 1646, James Pennyman Sr. was charged with having opposed the landing of Cromwell's parliamentarian soldiers and sailors at Mask from the Rainbow and other ships. The 480-ton second-rate ship of the line, the Rainbow, commanded by Peter Andrews, was probably the flagship of the squadron that attempted to land the troops resisted by Pennyman's retinue. Parliament's warships patrolled the North Sea and English Channel in an attempt to stop ships carrying supplies for the Royalists and to counter Royalist warships and privateers. The parliamentarian use of amphibious raids from warships was not an unusual tactic. As recruiting for Newcastle's Northern Army continued in Northumberland and County Durham during 1643, parliamentarian ships mounted a series of raids along the northeast coast. These included landings at Newnham, Cramlington, Holy Island and Haggerston. In the latter, Royalist Colonel Sir Thomas Haggerston was captured by parliamentarian coastal raiders, put aboard ship and taken as a prisoner to London. The purpose and circumstances of the raid on Mask by the Sea in late summer 1643 are unknown. It's possible that the parliamentarians were attempting to capitalise on any confusion arising in the village following news of the death of the Lord of the Manor, Sir William, in Oxford on the 22nd of August 1643. Accounts tell us that on the day of the landing, James Penniman, with some others of the country assembled with such arms as they had to hinder and oppose the seamen from coming ashore. We don't know whether a show of royalist strength on the beach at Mass deterred the seamen and soldiers from the parliamentarian ships from even landing, or whether the landing was physically opposed with pike and musket or even billhook. The defenders certainly had the advantage of the high ground of the stray or dunes that overlooked and commanded either side of the cut or howl leading up from the beach into the village. The raiders were forced back to their boats to return to their ships, perhaps with casualties on both sides. The raid was thwarted with seemingly no major effects to the local community. After the Royalist defeat at Marston Moor in early July 1644, North Yorkshire, the Tees Valley and County Durham were overrun by the Parliamentarians and the Scots Army of the Covenant.
If you visit Mass today, you can still see Mass Hall and other reminders of the village at that time, including the tiny crook framed Winkies Castle on the High Street, one of the last surviving 17th century domestic premises and now the village museum. The tower and spire of St Germain's Parish Church and the 16th century tithe barn, now a private house. And of course, the largely unspoilt beach where the attempted landing took place, still part of a beautiful eight mile expanse of sand from the mouth of the River Tees, south down to Huntcliffe and Bulby, some of the highest cliffs on the east coast of England. This poem by Janet Philo reimagines the scene on that day in summer 1643. We'd seen Dutch sails all summer, moonlighting on our horizon, low in the water, heavy with plundered herring. Now, here's the rainbow, second rate and full of Englishmen, broadside in our shallows, gun decks so close her winking ports eyeball watchers on the shore. We'd heard whispers over ale, curling through pipe smoke. Sir Thomas of Haggerston taken, and Sir William Penniman's plague-ridden bones still settling in the ground. The old man leads our small trained band of mask men. Billmen and pikemen make a stand by up turned cobbles, deep as boot tops in wind-blown sand, while musketeers line the way with shot. Each side of the narrow howl, to the right, to the left, and from above, there is no way for Parliament today. Flocks of little terns skim the tide line, back and forth, back and forth. Turnstones patter in the pebble wash, and a lone crow caws and claws the skittering sea foam, seeking carrion. The ebbing tide carves ribs and valleys into sand, while we watch bubbles swell and pop from breathing holes of razor clouds. We note the sight. This is the place to come for bait tomorrow. The rainbow waits at anchor. Three masts, sails furled, with two more ships beside her, safe beyond the black rock scars and clarty ooze seeping long shore from the teeth, where blue-black lobster breathe their thanks for one more day of life. Parliament lodges through the shallows. Muskets and halberds held shoulder high, stumbling on rolling stones where rivulets cut twisted fleets and drench these Englishmen before they feel their impotence and the cry goes up, retreat. We watch from the howl as their sails unfurl.